Hello again. I'm Frank. Not Merrick. I'm Frank Derrick. I understand there was some confusion last year regarding my true identity. The confusion being that I said I was Frank Merrick, and it was a lie. I'm his long-lost half-brother who's assumed his identity and taken over FRC. But I'll bet you're wondering, is this also a lie? No, it's not. Or is it? I suppose you'll just have to live in continuing mystery forever. Anyways, I've uncovered the truth about next year's game, revealed to you as... I've decided to communicate what I've learned in the form of an advanced alien language taught to me by religious cultists in the Amazon jungle. This just in, I'm being told the average high school student cannot understand bird. We'll have to add that to our non-existent curriculum. I suppose I'll have to use the significantly less efficient language known as English. So back to the beginning. As Frank Derrick, it has been revealed to me that infinite charge will in fact not involve lightsabers. Of any kind. Shocking, I know. Instead, the robots this year will feature batteries. These batteries, and this is true, will power the robots. And generally do that for about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Of course, it is at the leisure of teams to adjust this range. If you work really hard, you can get it down to zero. Now, to be completely honest I do not know the full game this year. This is, after all, a predictions video. So, let's predict. What do we know about this year's game? It's coming out in an even year, so it'll probably be pretty good. It'll likely feature a game mechanic we haven't really seen before, but not necessarily a game piece. So to start, we'll just pick an easy one. PVC tetrahedrons, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I kid. It's gonna be balls. But it seems that first really enjoys making it balls and something else. So what will it be this time? Balls and power prisms. Balls and PVC tetrahedrons. Balls and traffic cones. Just traffic cones. Wait, that's a Vex game. Okay okay I got it. Balls and balls. Yes, that's right. Small balls. And larger balls. And medium balls. This is my kind of game to be honest. But why? Do you put the balls in more than one location? Does it matter which one you pick up? Yes. Absolutely yes. It must matter. There must be strategy. And by strategy I mean a way for the worst robots on an alliance to screw up so badly that it physically undoes whatever the rest of their alliance is attempting to do. I call this competition, but I think first calls it good game design. With this in mind, I predict the three different ball sizes will be worth three different point sets. For simplicity, we'll assign plus five points to the biggest balls, plus three to the middle size, and plus two to the smallest. Three scoring objectives will be placed at either end of the field, above the driver station. To confuse the audience less, your scoring zones are above your heads. To score the maximum amount of points, teams will have to score 21 points in each scoring location. Okay, but why would you make the magic number 21? Reasons. This creates a bonus for the team. Going over 21 in a scoring zone causes the zone to overcharge and removes all points scored there. In this fashion, we mix strategy, math, and the ability for one team to totally ruin an entire match all in one scoring system. It's genius. Now I know what you're all thinking. What gargantuan piece of garbage can we jam into the middle of the field so that no one anywhere can see anything at any time? Easy. We're going to put a cage in the middle of the field. And put the technicians inside it. And when alliances reach the max number of balls, the humans join the game. Humans deploy overcharge balls that they have to feed in by hand through the bars in the cage. These balls can be put in the other alliances batteries, wiping out their entire score. Why? Strategy. Okay okay, there's just two more things to cover. Auto is easy. Just do the things you normally do but badly and in the first 15 seconds for more points. Classic first approved game making. 
The last thing to cover is the climbing. No, not end game. End game is what they used to call it for legal reasons. We are cutting right to the chase here and calling it climbing. Wherein, and get this, you do not climb anything. In fact, the field climbs you. Or more accurately it stacks you. This is probably the least understood war we've been in in our history. Using the charge you've built up in the scoring objectives, you can activate a forklift that will lift one robot up to the height of another robot. A robot can then lift itself up underneath that robot. And then a third robot can happily sit underneath. And that's my full prediction for 2020. Three kinds of balls. Inverse climbing. Regular, boring old auto. And once again it doesn't matter because ultimately the only true winners here are the people lucky enough to be picked by the two teams that ultimately win half of the not really most of the world championships because they get to say they won championships but know deep down in their heart that their biggest contribution to the alliance was as a cheering squad. And that's the first we know and love. We like, we like to party. We like to party. We like to party.